DuckTales Earthquack. Scrooge McDuck had found a series of cracks in the ground around his money bin. He asked the inventor, Jiro Gearloose, Gier to study the program. Jiro came back with an answer. I found a major fault under the building, he said. If there's an earthquake, every dime in your money bin will be lost. Oh no, said Scrooge. It's okay, said Jiro. Quickly, I've invented a machine that will help. Once we put it under the money bin, there'll be nothing to worry about. Workers began to put Jiro's anti-earthquake machine in place. Right away, they dug a tunnel from outside the city to a cave underneath the money bin. Scrooge and Jiro wa watched the work. On the last day, the earthquake machine could be connected. Suddenly, workers came running out of the tunnel. Ghosts, they screamed. The cave is full of ghosts. Nonsense, shouted Scrooge. It's true, said the frightened foreman. When we got close to the cave, we started hearing voices. That cave is haunted, sir. Gero, bring me a cart, ordered Scrooge. I'm gonna find out what's going on. Good idea, agreed Gero. But take along a radio so that you can let us know what you find. Uncle Scrooge climbed into the cart and disappeared into the tunnel. Are you all right? asked Gero over the radio. I'm going much too fast, screamed Scrooge, but none of no one heard him. The radio's not working, cried Jero. We'll help Uncle Scrooge, said Huey, to his brothers jumping in a cart, another cart. Come on! Gero waited at, by the entrance as the boys started down the tunnel. The drop is very steep, warned Louie. Pull the brake handle. I can't, yelled Dewey. It's broken! We're gonna crash! Scrooge had already crashed at the end of the tracks, but he was all right. He looked around. The cave is huge! The gigantic rock pillars that went from the floor to the ceiling. There were bright-colored balls all over the floor. He stopped to look at one more closely, then jumped back in surprise. The ball itself had turned into a strange creature. Pretty soon, Huey, Dewey, and Louie crashed too. Look, Daddy, said the little being, exactly like the one Scrooge had seen. More from above ground! It looks like an invasion, said the large creature, frowning. This is, troubles me. Who are you? asked Huey bravely. Terry Fermis, of course. The people who live underground. You are from above ground, aren't you? Uh, yes, answered Dewey. Leave them, son. Broke in the larger Terry Fermi. The games will begin soon, and I'm the judge. We'll be late if we don't hurry. What games? asked Louie. But the Terry Fermis had already turned themselves into balls and were rolling away. The boys followed them and found Scrooge in the crowd of spectators. Happy to see their uncle safe and sound, the three nephews joined him. At last, Uncle Scrooge understood what the games were all about. The Terry Fermis turned themselves into balls, then rolled at top speeds until they crashed against the pillar in the middle of the cave, causing the earth to shake. The one who could shake the earth the most could win the, would win the prize, an ancient cracked vase. Stop, cried Scrooge, running to the king of the Terry Fermis. Stop the games! You're causing earthquakes above ground! We must stop this silly sport, said Scrooge. But how, Uncle Scrooge? asked Louie. Everyone wants to win that prize. That's it, said Scrooge hopefully. Quick, find one of those mine carts and get ready to get out of here. Moments later, Scrooge and his nephews had jumped into a cart and were racing through the caves. They zoomed past the king and grabbed the prize. The Terry Furries gave chase, eager to get their cracked face back, but Scrooge and his nephews escaped through the tunnel entrance. We can't let them get away with this, yelled the king. At the count of three, the Terry Furries all rolled together and smashed into the pillar in the center of the cave. The crash rocked the earth above. An earthquake, screamed Scrooge, frightened. Quick, get in my limousine, ordered Scrooge to his driver. He yelled, follow that crack. Scrooge hung out the window, then yelled again, stop, don't go any farther. Are you talking to me? asked his driver. No, said Scrooge hotly. I'm talking to the crack. It's going to destroy me money bin. When they reached the money bin, Scrooge jumped out of the car. Everything was shaking. Walls cracked like eggshells, and his mountains of gold was sliding rapidly into the ground. Me money, cried Scrooge. Me precious money. Like water running down the drain, the gold in Scrooge's money bin was swallowed up by the earth. I've lost everything, groaned Scrooge. I'm ruined. I'm poor. While Scrooge McDuck was crying over his lost fortune, the Terry Fermies were up to their chests in gold coins. What is this filth? asked the disgusted king. It came from above, came, came the answer. 
This is awful, said the king. They have thrown all the, down all this garbage down in revenge for that earthquake. Well, we won't let them get away with it. We'll send it right back to them. The quake that followed pushed the gold coins and the gold bills back up into Scrooge's money bin. Look, Uncle Scrooge, cried Louie with joy. Your money has come back. Hooray, shouted Scrooge, throwing his hat up in the air. His hat rolled along the ground and slipped through the crack just before it closed up. The, in the cape below, the little Terry fairies picked up Scrooge's hat, studied it curiously. Look, said the king, the ones above ground sent me this for our grand game prize. It's much prettier than the one we had. Magnificent, said the king. Now we can really make beautiful earthquakes. Not here, though. This place is all wrong now. But I've heard of a place called California. So off they went, the Terry Fermies, rolling through their caves to California. Meanwhile, in his money bin up above, Scrooge McDuck could once again enjoy his favorite pastime, playing with his money.